Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Galactic Science Let's Play with Arturio Ameris. In the previous episode, I showed you how the lava processing system got updated using the awesomeite so that it was producing lava much faster. Now I think it's time to show you how I intend to uh, produce soul sand. And I've already started to set this up. What I have here are oak barrels. And I have some water generation here. These are liquid transfer nodes. They have a couple of world interaction upgrades. These automatically feed water into the um, oak barrels. There's dirt down there that needs to be mycelium for this to work. So I'm going to go grab some ancient spores. And I need eight of these, so I'll put the other eight back. I don't need all of them. I could actually make do with just two. I could infect one dirt block on either side and just let it go. Um, but I don't really need these for anything else, so I might as well use them. So there, now we have mycelium and a little bit of mushrooms. It'll, those will produce mushrooms. Not that I really need them. And as you can see, these are slowly transforming into witch water. Okay, so those are all done now. And by making a, a four barrel system here, this basically will produce uh, soul sand faster at a four times rate than my previous one that was just a single barrel system. So you put sand in here, and you can see it's kind of eating the sand. I, I don't understand that visual glitch, but we'll just choose to ignore it. So as you can see, it says it's transforming. So that water there is being turned into witch water. And as soon as it turns into witch water, a sand gets inserted into it, which turns into soul sand. And underneath each one of the oak barrels, you can see there's a transfer node that's pulling soul sand out of each barrel. And here. And that's getting fed into this barrel here of soul sand. So every couple of seconds, this will produce a piece of soul sand, you know, relatively quickly, now that it's got four in there. And what I will use that for is by running soul sand through a sieve, you get nether wart, ghasts, tears, and um, quartz, nether quartz. So very, very useful. The nether quartz and glowstone I'll use to make uh, blast resistant glass that also produces a little bit of light. And uh, that's how I'm going to make the uh, new meteorite shield out of up top. So real quick, I'm just going to fill in the dead space down here so that nothing can spawn down here. Backfill all this. Because once it's up and running, there's no reason to ever come down here. Give me just one second. This won't take long. Now on this side, I got to leave a gap for that mycelium, because if I cover the mycelium, uh, I think that kills it and turns back into dirt, and then this stops working. So if you wanted mushrooms, you could use the system to produce mushrooms too. You just have to leave an access path to get down there. I don't know if there's a way to automatically gather mushrooms, but, uh, but that's how you do it. Looks like I'm about to run out of oxygen. Let me just swap that out real quick. Okay, and as you can see, in that, that brief period of time, this has made nearly, well, more than half of a stack of soul sand. So very, very useful. Now, at some point, this will all get backfilled too, and this will all be underground. The layer that I'm standing on here will be, um, this layer here will be the ground floor. Eventually, when I have enough resources, 
to make the enough factory block to cover this floor, uh, the entire floor will come up one level. Okay. So from the last time you saw, which was just actually in my time just a few minutes ago, this system has produced 35 broken ore plus another five of these, which is actually quite a bit of iron ore. I'll do that later. Um, this is this is a good way to produce resources. Just kind of let it run. Let's put that away. I'll go up top real quick and show you the tree farm. But, uh, here this is kind of a good view of, of uh, this will be the industrial processing area and I know it looks very very large but I'll make use of almost all of the space. My power generation will be here, my uh, fission and fusion chambers, storage, automatic production. There's going to be a lot going on down here. So this, all of this space is going to get used. You can just put these oxygen tanks in here so that I don't uh, suffocate. So between episodes, a lot of what I've done... Oh, it looks like I've had a meteorite... meteor strike. That took out part of my wall. Oh, it was a big one, too. I don't think anything can get through there at the moment. Let me just block that up a little bit. Stay on the safe side. I'll fix all of that later. Now, um, I put the wall up and uh, tried to light everything to make it safe. Um, I'm in the process of leveling it. Oh, I've got a creeper over there. And there are still spiders on top of the hab. Let me kill this creeper. There's Mr. Spider. I don't know where he is. There we go. My spikes may have finally killed a spider. <laughs> oh, no, there he is. Stupid spider. There we go. It looks like he took some damage from the spikes, though. Uh, one of the other things I did was I, I expanded the tree farm. I automated this. Um, at one point I did record video for this, but uh, as I mentioned, the sound didn't get recorded, so I'm redoing it here. Um, so I'm running out of charcoal. That's one thing that is not automated yet. I have not automated feeding charcoal to this. Uh, eventually I'll probably produce power for this somehow and put an RF engine in there. So this transfer node pulls from the chopper. So as it produces logs, saplings, and apples, those get pulled out, drawn down this channel, and fed into the barrels above. This transfer node here is pulling from this barrel, and that barrel holds stone axes. So it pulls, goes down here, and gets fed into the chopper there. Um, now, if I wanted to, I could put another barrel here with a transfer node and put charcoal in there, and it would automatically feed charcoal in there. And as long as the barrel doesn't run out of charcoal, the system will keep running. That's not a bad way to go, but long term, if I put an RF engine in there and then give it a power source, it'll run forever. And this this will just start filling up these barrels with resources. So this works pretty well for now. Um, eventually, I'm going to need just tons of wood as I uh, start upgrading barrels downstairs. I'll make automated systems for making barrels and barrel upgrades and structural upgrades. Um, so I may I may expand this farm one more ring around. Um, I may do that, I'm not really sure. Oh, skeleton. You gotta keep moving, changing direction so he can't lock on to you. Or it makes it harder for him to lock on to you. 
Yep, he's locked on. There we go. He's dead. So I guess I need to get up there and, and light up along the top edge of the wall there. They're spawning on that wall and then dropping in. And uh, that's that's pretty much everything that I have to show you right now. Let me eat something real quick before I starve to death. And we can look at the quest book. I did finally finish all of the quests in here. That one, because that's a repeatable quest, um, and I haven't died yet, I'm not really counting that, but uh, eventually I'll probably die doing something stupid, and then I'll finish that off, and then this one will say 100%. Uh, the next quest line I'm going to start will probably be the Moon Rocket. Why do all the work? Um, I'm close to being done with that. I don't want to waste diamonds to do a diamond upgrade and iron. I'm not swimming in iron yet because I keep using it to automate my system. So I won't do that yet. And these I can't do until I get to Mars. Um, and uh, the item conduit, I need an alloy smelter, so I have to go to Mars before I can do that too. Storage solutions, almost done here. Um, Dimensional chests are not that bad. They just take a lot of iron to make. Um, these two, I, I've never found, you know, the item router we did use in the community world. I didn't fully understand how they work. Um, I had trouble configuring them and getting them to work consistently. For simple things, I, can, I think I can make them work, but for doing some of the complicated stuff, they, they kind of baffle me, which is why I prefer to use the the transfer pipes and relocator pipes. I know how those work and they seem to work pretty well. This black hole storage, I, you know, if you have one thing that you need to store an awful lot of, apparently that's what these are for. But, um, you know, I don't really need that. These quests I need to start doing. Um, I'm just kind of procrastinating a little bit. I don't think there's anything in here that I have to go to Mars for. Uh, but this is uh, where you get your, your fission and fusion chambers. Um, I need to do this quest where you produce the quintuple compressed cobblestone. Maybe another episode I'll focus on that and show you how you put that together relatively easily. It'll, once you build a couple of things, it takes two or three hours of it running and then it'll produce your quintuple compressed cobblestone pretty easily. And um, the nether quartz I could do now. I've, I've got the soul sand, I could run it through a sieve. So maybe I'll do that down the road in another episode. But that is, that is it for today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, if you have, you know, feel free to throw a like on it. You don't have to if you don't want to, but if you enjoyed it and you want to, I'd appreciate it. Uh, I guess it helps my numbers and whether or not I show up when people do searches and stuff like that. I don't really know how um, YouTube's algorithms work yet, but everyone else says it, it helps to get likes and, and comments and subscriptions and stuff. I'm mostly just doing this for fun. So, like I said, if you want to, you can. If not, no big deal. But uh, thank you for watching. Have a good day. Arturia Maris, out.